thank you for coming to our MAD webinar and uh, there'll be many more to come as well. Hopefully it'll be an interesting morning for everyone. Um, just so you know, we are recording this and it will be shared on social media afterwards. Thank you everyone for coming. I'm not going to talk any longer. I'm just going to pass you over to Tony. Hello, and uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, what we're doing today is looking at the importance of uh, workplace transport safety. It's an area that often gets missed out by uh, companies, and it's very, very important. In the UK, being struck by a moving vehicle is a significant concern in workplace safety. According to the HSE, that's a health and safety executive, 20, 20 workers were killed by moving vehicles uh, in the year 2022 to 2023. Over the last five years, 19% of all uh, workplace fatalities resulted from workers being struck by moving vehicles. Th this type of accident remains one of the most common causes of fatal injuries in the workplace. The statistics highlight the urgent need for effective safety measures, including proper training, the use of high visibility clothing, uh, clothing to mitigate the risks associated with moving vehicles. So we're going to look at some things today to see how we can reduce these risks. And uh, let's go on for it as well. Uh, the, he the health and safety executive is a national regulator for workplace health and safety, and they are responsible for prosecuting companies that violate safety regulations, including those uh, related to workplace transport. So as we go through uh, the talk, I will give a few examples. The first one is a transport company has been fined over £255,000 after a work worker fell from a, a lorry and fractured his skull. The man who was working as a delivery driver had been delivering glass to a site when the incident occurred in uh, Leicester in December 2020. As no forklift truck was available, the man was uh, passing panes of glass from a stillage to a, another worker on the ground. The man fell from the lorry, fractured his skull uh, and received some very serious injuries. So what can we try and do to negate all these problems? First of all, visibility. It's very important to have good visibility in your uh, yard area or where workplace transport is operating. So it's very important so drivers can see pedestrians and also pedestrians can see drivers. It's very important uh, around some areas such as corners. So it could be worth considering putting mirrors in place, signs for drivers to sound the horns as they're going around the corner. So there's things like that so we can make sure that people are aware that the vehicle's coming round. Another really important one, uh, depending on the size of your yard, could be a one-way system. So if you've got a one-way system in place, you've got all the vehicles going one way, but it then uh, reduces the, the lack of reversing that's needed, which is a very high risk area. And very, very important, can you separate routes from pedestrians and vehicles where possible? So some places have the pavements. Another thing that you can do is you can paint a line down the side of the building. So for that, that's a pedestrian area. So if you have that, make sure your pedestrians walk on it. So you're not, not getting them walking in the middle of the road, which we often see. Uh, and also, if you've got a good crossing uh, good pedestrian areas. Make sure that you've got crossing points as well, so you can paint a pedestrian crossing, which is very important to do as well. So you've only got a certain area where people are crossing from one side to the other. Uh, also, it's also good, just use the highway code signs as well, because everybody's used to those as well. So that works really well. Another important thing as well for visibility is make sure that you've got adequate lighting in place where people are walking. Very important is that. Another one to check as well is keep road surfaces uh, firm and even so especially if you've got forklift trucks uh, working outside if they've got any potholes or anything like that it can cause them to tip so always have a look at the road surface and make sure you've not got massive potholes if we have filled them in immediately that's really important uh, then loading and unloading you get a lot of accidents uh, happening that so make sure you've got a safe area away from the main traffic route if at all possible where loading and unloading takes place and where there's forklift truck movement going around and another thing is as well, if you've got a big area, try to keep separate car parking for, for visitors. So you see it a lot when uh, visitors aren't really used to how the place operates and things like that. So a lot of if you go into the building and turn left or whatever, there's all signs for the visitors car park that reduces then pedestrians walk, walking in ways that they shouldn't do. Next area, speed control, very important. You get a lot of vehicles. Uh, zooming about sometimes so it's important to control this first thing is decide on a speed limit so depending on the size of your yard uh, 
uh, and where it is at five miles an hour could be okay. Some really big places have like 10 miles an hour. So do an assessment, work out what speed limit it should be, and then try and make sure that people ad adhere to that. So it's by having speed limit uh, signs in strategic areas, one as they get into the site and as they get further on. Also, if you're still getting problems with it, you could look at speed bumps. If you've got security cameras, that's quite a good way of monitoring how fast people are going. And we've also got some clients that's got speed detectors. So they're the ones like you see on the road. So if, they, if it's a 10 mile an hour speed limit, it's got the happy sign if they're going below 10 mile an hour, miles an hour and the uh, unhappy sign if they're going faster. So it's very important is that. So pedestrian safety, measures to pre uh, project <laughs> Protect pedestrians from being knocked down are very important. So a lot of that segregation, as we said before, pedestrian crossings and everything. So the segregation is really important. We've got an example here of when three companies have been given six uh, figure fines after a driver was crushed between a reversing HGV and a forklift truck in a warehouse beside a Heathrow Airport. A vehicle which was collecting a consignment reverse causing the employee to become crushed between the rear of the vehicle and the forklift truck re resulting in serious in injuries. HSE visited and the investigation found the site layout did not segregate those working or visiting the site practicable from those being struck by moving vehicles. None of the defendants had taken the responsibility for managing traffic, neither did they communicate, cooperate or coordinate with one another. So one company was fined £320,000, another one £120,000 and the third one £110,000. So if they've got a good risk assessment in place, put all the things that we're talking about today, hope this uh, accident may not have happened. So then another big area is uh, vehicle loading and unloading. So uh, risks associated uh, with that are very high. One of the big things where we see quite a few fatalities is when a truck driver gets out of the truck and he starts helping the forklift truck driver to take things out. Always make sure that your wagon driver is either inside the wagon or is in a holding area within the within the premises that you build, you're visiting. Do not have him next to it. There was a one quite recently when the driver was uh, helping unload the side of a, a wagon and the, the wagon wasn't loaded right, they pulled back the curtains and everything fell down, it landed on top of him and killed him. It's a very, very easily avoided accident is that, so always make sure that you put that in place. Uh, also as well, when you've got uh, loading and unlo unloading, reversing vehicle signs, put them all over as well, very important so people are aware that there's going to be reversing vehicles in an area. It's one thing when HSE come round as well, they always look for that as well. So always make sure that they've got that. And banksman training as well. So if you've got people behind vehicles that they are trained on how to do it, which we'll go into more detail a little bit later. Vehicle maintenance. So that's very important on two sides of it. So it's regular checks for the maintenance. So if you've got vehicles, make sure that the uh, and wagons, make sure that you have daily check sheets that go through all the different areas of it. If you've got forklift trucks, Make sure that they uh, you have a daily forklift truck check sheet for it. So anything like that, we can help you with. Uh, and also with forklift trucks, they need to be statutorily maintained, which is very important as well. So they get they should be checked on a six monthly, uh, sorry, an annual basis via a competent contractor. Always ensure that the vehicles are suitable for the purpose which they are used. So if you are using a forklift truck outside, make sure that it is one that's capable of working outside, not an inside warehouse uh, forklift truck. So always maintain vehicles as well. So make sure that you've got your maintenance records in place and they are maintained, that they've been good uh, service and repair, particularly the braking system, steering, tyres, lights, mirrors. So just make sure that they're all OK. And uh, specific safety systems as well. So if they've got CCTV on them when you're reversing, make sure that it's actually working. And if it's not, make sure that the employee actually reports it so we can do something about it. Uh, also, if people have to walk onto trailers and get up there, make sure they've got suitable access to it. So that could be uh, ladders or something like that to go through. And also, uh, if it's a forklift truck that's working outside, make sure that it's got rollover protection on it as well. And also make sure that they wear the seat belts as well, because all forklift trucks should have seat belts when they're working outside. So make sure it's got that in place. Next training, which we just touched on before. So make sure that your drivers are adequately trained. If they're using uh, trucks or wagons, that they've got the correct license in place. 
and also forklift truck drivers. It's very, very important that they have the correct license in place for the forklift truck that they're using. So if it's a counterbalance truck that they've got a license for it and also that they receive retraining every three to five years. This is one of the things that HSE, when they come on site, look at in great detail. And if you've not got trained forklift truck drivers, I can guarantee that you'll get a fine from them. Very important that you do that. And uh, also as well, make sure that drivers are supervised when they're coming on site as well. So if you've got a big site, that they know where to go when they arrive. So some of them, they have uh, signs in place that drivers should report to reception or whatever, and then reception tells them where they can go. It goes through that way with it. Uh, traffic routes. Uh, traffic routes are very important as well. So as we said before, that uh, you've got the correct signage in place. So you've got your speed limit signs, you've got your reversing vehicle signs in place, you've got your one-way system in place uh, if needed, and you've got the correct road markings and zebra crossings. Also for car parks as well, it's very important to uh, have those marked out if you can do as well uh, for uh, visitors and for your workplace as well. And also in the car parks, it's a sensible way how they can get from the car park to a safe area as well. So personal protective equipment, when people are working where there's a lot of reversing vehicles going on, everything like that, it's very important that the uh, drivers can see them. So what we like to advocate is people wear high visibility tabards. So by doing that, you can see them a lot easier. So uh, a lot of companies are making it mandatory for anybody working, walking, in a traffic route area that they've got these on very very important for it next banksman procedures so going back to a lot of people unfortunately get killed when they're uh, acting as a banksman so what a banksman is it's somebody who stood near a vehicle and they're directing it where to go so uh banksman should be trained and um, we've got like a training course that we can uh, show you if you're interested in that please get in contact with us about it and they should also be trained on where to stand it's very important so you get a lot of them directly behind the wagon as it reverses next to a wall and that's when you get horrible accidents so it's making sure that they're aware of how to carry out these procedures and there again that they're wearing the correct uh, PPE as they do it the high visibility uh, jackets and everything so that's what that is so one of the important things is to carry out a risk assessment so following this if anybody wants a risk assessment procedure for workplace transport please get in contact from, with me and um, we've got one that we can give you uh, which uh, it asks you all the questions and you can fill it out that way with it so it, it's very important that you do that when HSC come on site it's one of the things that they always ask about workplace transport and if you've not got it it's a big open goal for them to uh, give you a fine so that's how it works so uh, I'd just like to read as well uh, another accident that happened, which was a, a bit of a tragedy. When uh, two major transport companies have been fined a combined total of £2.2 .2 million pounds after a loving dad and husband uh, was killed when he was hit by a HGV uh, in Birmingham. The depot manager died when he was struck by reversing the HGV in August 2019. The incident happened when the vehicle reversed out of a parking space in the transport yard. An investigation by the health and safety executive found that companies had failed to manage the risks associated with workplace transport. So uh, the company uh, was fined 1.9 million and another one was fined 300,000 pounds. But interestingly, uh, the HSE principal inspector said this tragic accident was completely preventable. Both companies failed to recognise and control risks associated with workplace transport, and in particular the dangers of reversing vehicles and poor visibility. The, uh, the principle of ensuring pedestrians and vehicles are kept apart is well known, and the measures needed to ensure separation and control the risks may not need not to be complicated. If, comp if the companies had acted to identify and manage the risks involved and put in a safe system of work, this incident would not have happened. So that's why it's so important to carry out your uh, workplace transport risk assessment. Uh, so that's basically a quick overview of health and safety and transport. So if you've got any questions, please get in contact with me. I'm Tony Eckersley from uh, TSE Solutions.
Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, um, Tony. That was really, really interesting. I think we've got time for some questions. Um, I have had one sent in, if you don't mind answering that. And they've said, if you've got a fleet of vehicles, should they have a vehicle checklist? Yes, definitely. It's very good practice to have a vehicle checklist in place. And it's also a, a good idea to make sure that your vehicle drivers are aware of their responsibilities. So that would include checking tyres, making sure that they've uh, got uh, no punctures, that they've got the correct amount of air in it. Also that all the lights are working and any other vehicle related things as well. If they've got forklift trucks, it's very important that you do a daily checklist as well. So if you want one of those, I can send you one. That's no problem. Brilliant, thank you. Has anyone else got any other questions that I'd like to ask Tony in the last five minutes or so? I have a quick question for you, Tony. Um, what what you've said all sounds like it's a lot of common sense to get these checks in place. And obviously it's not just the fines, it's about um, keeping people safe very much. I guess, is this about knowing what checks you've got to do and making sure you stay on the right side of the law to um, keep people safe yes it is what you need to do is record it in what they call a risk assessment so by doing the assessment what you're doing is you're looking at the layout of your work uh, where the vehicles are moving and everything and then it's you're right it's applying simple things to it such as making sure that the speed limits are okay the big so thing is uh, when people are walking around uh, that they are segregated from vehicles and if they're not segregated that they're trained it's very important that and going back to i can't stress enough how it is uh, important to have uh, the, the high visibility things on so vehicles can see you and also good lighting as well so especially as we're approaching winter now you don't want people sort of walking around uh, high vehicle movement areas just wearing black and no one can see them so that's very important so it's just applying logic to it really and speed limits is so important because especially delivery drivers you get some of them driving around like Lewis Hamilton. So it's making sure that you control those. And what you can do as well, if you've got someone speeding on your premises, get in contact with their company and report them as well. And if it goes to the nth degree, don't let them on site. So basically, it's not just about trying to do the right thing and making it up and sort of winging it. It's about knowing what the right thing is and making sure that you're compliant with that. Yes, it is very much. Because so. I'm sure yes, nobody yeah. ever deliberately does anything wrong or thinks oh if I do this it's going to cause an accident people won't do that they just don't know what that what they're doing isn't right yeah that, that's it it's down to education as well but yeah you, uh, you've got a responsibility to have the correct health and safety uh, in place so that's where we can come in and help you as well so if you've got a company uh, that's got five or more employees you need legally to have risk assessments and their health and safety policy in place and part of the risk assessments is the workplace transport area of it as much as others as well so we go around and look at them you see a lot uh, going back to what i was saying about uh, uneven car parks as well so if you've got forklift trucks sort of buzzing about there's nothing worse than having big potholes where it can cause them to tip over so we've had that uh, we always check on that that's really important and of course if you've got forklift trucks moving around that you don't have reversing vehicles or they're kept away from it it's very important that way as well but a lot of it is very uh, logical when you think about it thank you that answered my question thank you brilliant any final questions before we wrap up no great well thank you very much tony that's been really informative thank you